Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to evaluate the derivative of the inverse function at a point. So we're given f of x equals x to the fifth power plus x to the third power, and g of x is given as f inverse, the inverse function for f of x, and we're supposed to evaluate the derivative of g at 2. So here's the thing. We can't invert f easily. Well, actually, it's impossible because it's a quintic obviously the method for finding the inverse of f of x which is g of x would be setting it equal to y and then solving for x but as you can see here this is going to a, this is going to turn into a quintic and y is like a parameter so that's going to be impossible to solve because we don't have a general formula so we're going to differentiate the inverse function without finding the inverse function. That's going to be the main goal for this video. Make sense? Okay, let's proceed. So we are given f of x and g is the inverse of f of x and we're supposed to evaluate g, the derivative of g at 2. So we're going to start by setting the x to the fifth plus x to the third to y, just like before. So let's go ahead and set y equals x to the fifth plus x to the third. Great. So finding the derivative of the inverse function basically means that finding the derivative of x with respect to y, in other words, because our inverse function is basically obtained by getting x as a function of y. So from here, if we were able to get an expression for x, it would be g of y. Make sense? So we're trying to differentiate g with respect to y, but it's impossible to find x in terms of y. So what are we going to do? Well, first of all, let's go ahead and focus on this. The derivative of g would be the derivative of x with respect to y, which is dx over dy, and that would be g prime. And then, since we're trying to find g prime at 2, we would replace y with 2. Make sense? So that would be the whole idea, but impossible to find x in terms of y. So what do we do? Well, since we have y in terms of x, from here we can find dy over dx, which is the derivative of y with respect to x. And let's see how we can use it. Now, this is a polynomial. How do you differentiate x to the fifth? By using the power rule, if you have x to the power n and you're differentiating it, it becomes n times x to the power n minus 1. We also use this rule for integrals. You just have to reverse it. Okay, so that's going to be 5x to the fourth plus 3x squared. Now, we said that we need to find dx over dy at y equals 2, but we can't do it directly. So we're going to do it indirectly. How do you evaluate dx over dy if you know dy over dx? So, well, here's the thing. We're going to use the reciprocal because dx over dy is the reciprocal of dy over dx. Make sense? Like fractions, right? These are fractions, aren't they? Anyway, so this is going to become then 1 over 5x to the 4th plus 3x squared. But we have to be careful about one thing here because we found the derivative of g at y. So this is g prime at y. And we're supposed to evaluate g prime at 2. So that means to find g prime at 2, you must replace y with 2, but you don't have y in the expression. Why? Because this is the reciprocal of the y over the x, so it's not going to contain y, it's going to contain x in a reciprocal form. So what can I do? Well, here's the thing. If y is equal to 2, this means that y must be 2, can you find the x value from here? And here's your equation. So in this equation, we know that y is equal to 2, we need to find x. Let's do it. Easy, right? y is equal to x to the fifth plus x to the third, and we do know that y is equal to 2. Can you guess and check? Absolutely. From here, you'll easily see that x equals 1. But here's a million dollar question. Is that the only x value? Because we have to make sure that this is nicely invertible, so that there's only one value, so there's always one-to-one -one correspondence. So when you invert it, it's going to be the same thing. So how do you make sure of that, right? Well, this is where we use the derivative again. 
if you differentiate a function, you can tell whether it's going to be increasing, decreasing, and on which interval that's going to happen. So let's go ahead and took, look at the first derivative one more time. This is going to be 5x to the fourth plus 3x squared. If you take out an x squared, this is going to be 5x squared plus 3. Now what do you notice? This expression is always positive, or I can say it's always greater or equal to zero, because at zero, it's zero. Otherwise, it's always positive. So we can say that y prime is positive if x does not equal zero, and y prime is zero if x is zero. So we kind of have like a situation where we have the first derivative being equal to zero, but if you take the second derivative, you're also going to notice that it's also zero at zero, which kind of tells you that might be an inflection point. And that's actually what it is. I'm going to show you a graph at the end, which will also confirm our finding. So this means that our function is increasing for all values except for zero. Zero is a special point. We're going to look at it separately. But like I said earlier, if you take the second derivative, which is going to be 20x cubed plus 6x, you're going to notice that x equals zero is a solution. Okay, and that's the only solution that makes the second derivative zero. Now, what happens if you take the third derivative? You get an expression that's always positive. Anyways, that's another story. You don't really have to go that deep, but I think this gives you a good idea that x equals zero is an inflection point. You can also tell that it's an inflection point by looking at it this way. Take out the x and then make a table. You're going to notice that this is always positive, so the only thing that changed is the sign at zero is x. Therefore, if x is positive, the second derivative is going to be positive, which means our graph is going to be concave up. If x is less than 0, our graph is going to be concave down, which also confirms that x equals 0 is an inflection point, or some people call it point of inflection, Okay, where the concavity changes. Anyway, so x equals 1 seems to be the only solution in this case because our fraction is always increasing. So what do we do with that? We replace x with 1. So that gives us the answer. If you replace x with 1, so in other words, if you evaluate this expression, this expression for x equals 1, that gives you 1 over 5 plus 3, which is 8. So in other words, g prime at 2 is going to be 1 over 8. Now this is interesting because we did not know the inverse of this function, but we're able to evaluate the derivative at a point. If that point is of course nice enough, well it's always going to be nice, but the, the issue is when you set this equal to 2, finding the x value is not always easy because notice you're dealing with a quintic equation, right? Which doesn't have solution in the general case. But anyways, the answer is 1 8. Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph real quick. The graph of x to the fifth plus x to the third, as you can see, it intersects the horizontal line y equals 2 at a single point at x equals 1, and it changes concavity at 0 like we said before. It's always, always increasing. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.